Welcome to Cybercast, decoding today's cyber issues. We're live from Billington Cyber Summit. I'm your host, Kate Macri, and joining me today is Stacy Bostinick, who is the Chief of Implementation and Policy at the Office of the CIO, DOD. Um, she's the current point person for CMMC, so that's what we're going to talk about today. So to start off, I would love to hear what you consider to be the top three takeaways from CMMC 2.0 and how you're hoping it'll improve cybersecurity across the defense industrial base and why it's important given the fast-changing cyber landscape and why it's important, especially given the reception to CMMC 1.0. So I think... um 1.0 1.0 was included the maturity part of it, mm-hmm. right? So then when we did the review and after we started getting feedback from the first part of the rule, we recognized that companies were like, wait, you're going to come check my homework? Oh, oh, well, you know this is awfully hard, right? So at the end of the day, the maturity part, it's not time yet. Right. We have to stick with what they have been required to do since 2015 and get them settled or get the dib and, and industry settled with that. I think by aligning the key takeaway with aligning with the NIST mm-hmm. and having the NIST take on the perspective of maturity with the ever-changing cyber landscape is we go together as one unified federal government. We don't have one arm that has something different. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we've resoundingly heard over our time uh, with CMMC is that our industry partners are like, please don't make me have to do multiple types of certification, right? Mm -hmm. Give me one, let me standardize it, let me do really well at that, and don't throw different things at me. Don't give me, you know, CMMC DHS, CMMC DOD, where they're just a little bit different because it just becomes an irritation and uh, an end increased cost to be able to meet that. So those are, that's two takeaways, right? I got another one that I got to come up with. So um, from the third takeaway, I think uh, there is a recognition of the lack of cybersecurity professionals in the, in the industry Mm -hmm. and that how many people, while they thought, because we're going to be kind and say they really were trying, right? They thought they were doing the right thing and they thought they understood what they were complying with. At the end of the day, they didn't, and that our industry really needs the help to make sure that we become cyber aware and cyber savvy because our adversaries are taking advantage of that. You know, and not just the state a- actor adversaries. I'm talking about the 11 year old kid in somebody's basement that figured out how to. Um, siphon off your cage code information. If you start thinking about it, I met a guy, and I don't know if, how many people have heard this story for probably a bunch, but I met a guy down in South Carolina. He was a construction contractor, and he said, you know, I, I reached back out to the government, like, where's my $40,000 payment? And they're like, we paid you. And he's like, no, you didn't. And they're like, oh, yeah, we did. And somebody had gotten in, hacked his information, redirected his banking information to their wow. account, and he was out $40,000. That's insane. Cause, yeah, because the federal <laughs> government, we're not budgeted to give you, oh, sorry for your luck, somebody stole you forty grand. let me give you another, right? right. We, we're, we, we're down to the penny, mm-hmm. so we don't have another $40,000 to give. And mm-hmm. DOJ was like, hmm, forty grand? Yeah, I don't have time for that. I got other fish to fry, right? Mm-hmm. So he was kind of out of luck. He was on his own. And so cybersecurity... It needs to be a heads-up thing. Everybody's got to recognize that they're after us. NDIA did a survey a couple of years ago. 74% of their membership said, no, we've never been hacked. And it's like, that's no. That's not true. Well, that's exactly, <laughs> 74% didn't know they'd been right. hacked, right? I mean, we've all been hacked. Hell, Facebook. I've been hacked mm-hmm. on Facebook a couple times, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, they're after us. Mm-hmm. Just for the pure fun of it, for the money, for stealing our secrets, Right. Because there are people out there that are either have nefarious means or interests, you know, or bored, right, that, that, that go after us. And we need to protect ourselves, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, what, from your vantage point, just to follow up on that, what would you say is most confusing about compliance and, and difficult about getting people up to speed on 
cybersecurity? So I think the hardest nut to crack, and I am not the, the technical SME on mm-hmm. this, right? But everybody sets their environment up differently, right? It's kind of like, let's equate this to going into somebody else's kitchen, mm-hmm. right? You set your kitchen up the way it makes sense to you, mm-hmm. right? But now I got to protect that kitchen, right? And so the glasses are the most fragile part of it. Right. So if I put my barrier up over here in one house, it doesn't protect it because they're on the other side of the kitchen in the other house. Right. So right. so everybody's environment is slightly different. And so how you apply the controls takes knowledge and understanding of what you're doing. Right. You really got it's like math. Right. You got to understand the method behind it to really understand why you're doing what you're doing and how it's applicable to what you're working with. Mm-hmm. And so making sure and. So the hard part is a lot of companies, right? We're new starts. And we're 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 mm-hmm. innovative engineers or we're innovative people who can bring a product to the OD or to industry, but we're not IT people, right? So so I don't know, I go buy my laptop, I plug it in, it's good to go, right? No, 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 you gotta do some things. Well, what do I gotta do? I know, I'll ask my nephew. He comes home from college, he's an IT smart kid, and he'll take care of it, right? Well, so he doesn't understand the ins and outs of all the protection. So the hard part is for people to really understand what it is they've gotta do, what the protection methods are, and how to apply them in their particular circumstance. Right, which ties into the cybersecurity workforce issue. Too. Yes, yes, it does. In a pretty big way. And if you watched my last panel, I said I begged my kids to go into mm-hmm. Is there money in it? And they don't want to do it because their dad's in IT. Oh, well. <laughs> and we don't want to be geeks like our parents, right? right? My exactly. kids won't go into federal service either. <laughs> oh, no. So... How do you see CMMC working in tandem with other cybersecurity rules, uh, you know, like NIST and other mandates such as the White House's Zero Trust Executive Order? So CMMC is the crawl part. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, zero trust is, is probably the walk or the run. Yeah. Right. And so this is the foundation, the mm-hmm. first part, first step. Mm -hmm. Because we've got to get, and when this whole game started in 2013, right, it took them from 2013 to 2015 for people to come up with what industry, right, because initially we wanted the 853 for everybody. And industry said, oh, that's way too hard. We can't do that. So they negotiated, negotiated. In 2015, they came up with the NIST 800-171. Then it took us until... 2017 to get people to agree that sure I'll be compliant with that right and 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 it took us until 2018 2019 for people to go oh shoot people really are trying to steal my data right the recognition that it's a problem right it's kind of like AA the first step is recognizing you've got a problem so we finally gotten to the point where we've recognized we've got a problem now we've got to make sure that all the parts work well together right so CMMC is the crawl it's the first step for getting people started right mm-hmm. I mean the prayer and the hope and Matt Travis isn't very happy with me when I say this is that eventually our prayer was that we wouldn't need CMMC anymore because mm-hmm. companies would come heads up understand that people are after me I need to protect myself I need to make sure I keep the the snitches out of my my environment right and and make sure that we're we're ahead of it right so the maturity part was learning how to stay in front of that threat mm-hmm. how to how to keep it, anticipate it so to make sure that you're not in a situation where you get caught off guard right that's the training. So as we move forward, it's going to have to morph, just like we talked about the supply chain. It's all going to have to be a holistic view because our adversaries, the, the nasty people who are trying to make sure that they're going to be come out on top, are figuring out ways to get at us from every angle. Right. They're not just getting in through cyber. They're implanting people in. They're putting people on boards of, of, of directors to get information. Right. Yeah. They're coming at us. So it sounds like true implementation of zero trust is very far away if we're still struggling with the CMMC. Now component. Don't, add, don't say that in front of Re- uh, Randy Resnick, okay, because he, he's got dreams, right? And, yeah. and he's not that much younger than me, so we, we've got, like, plans in our careers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so obviously the maturity piece is a big struggle right now. Um, and as I'm sure you're aware, and I think Katie Arrington had to address this quite a bit during her tenure as well, uh, small businesses are 
continually expressing concerns about having adequate funds and resources right, to right. meet CMMC requirements, et cetera, et cetera. So from your perspective, how can DOD work with small businesses to support them as they pursue CMMC? So I think we're, we, are, we are working um, in a lot of different ideas. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, some of the ideas that we were throwing around um, was – a cloud solution that could have a low cost cloud solution, right? Mm -hmm. Everything from this perspective has to be at a reasonable cost. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, one thing we were thinking about is their mentor protege programs for small businesses today. Let's do a cyber mentor protege program where, you know, we could have some of the primes partner with the subs and help mm -hmm. bring them along. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we have the PTEX, we have project spectrum, we have, um, DC3 and NSA that all have, and CISA, have things where people can come to them and they will help you, right? They'll come sit down and they'll look and say, well, as the federal government, we can't say, you need to do this or you need to go buy this. But what we can say is, you know, if you looked at something like this or employed something like this, it could help you and, and point out your gaps, Right. But we're not going to we're not going to be able to come in and say you need to click this lever and buy this piece of, of software and, and this piece of equipment because we're not going to be that directive. But we can help lead you. I think another th area that we're looking at is education. Right. Improving the education. Now, one thing that the federal government wants to do is also promote the career field of cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. Not as easy as it sounds, right? So right. we can't just go hire a bunch of cybersecurity people and go, now y'all go help everybody. It doesn't work that way. And we can't, I can't even get my own kids to be interested in cybersecurity. So, you know, we've got to figure out creative ways to make it a, a sexy career field mm -hmm. so people are interested in getting into it. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, I don't want to keep you too much longer because I know you have to get going, but my last question for you, you know, in case people didn't tune into your panel or just haven't been keeping up to date with the latest CMMC news, what's the status update with CMMC 2.0? So you caught me at a good time oh, because we, are in, we have implemented the rule in internal review. So that means we have initiated the deliberative process, which means I can talk to you today about things that are, have already been said out in the public eye that nothing of, of subsequent that's within the rule. When we hope that we get it approved and out of the building, which you know can be an interesting mm -hmm. process in and of itself, and over to OMB, once it flips over to OMB, we've been told we have to be in listen mode, which you know that's not good for me because I am not a good, no, I'm a good <laughs> listener, but I like to talk. Um, so once we put it into the, the process with OMB and ORIRA, then we will kind of go silent. Now, okay. I know when we did that last time, people got very, you know, the, there were mixed messages. Oh, CMMC is going away. It's not going to happen. Oh, mm -hmm. my God, they're, they're, get, they're coming after us. That's why they've gone silent. No, <laughs> we've just been told we can't say anything because we have to wait for the, the text of the rule to come out for public comment that mm -hmm. we anticipate in March of 23, okay. then you will see that 60-day notice for public mm -hmm. comment. And I highly suggest and encourage everybody to review it. Get your two cents in, right? Because if you don't put your two cents in, I can't consider it and I can't accommodate your, your concern or right. tell you why we can't accommodate your concern. Right. Awesome. So that's our status. Awesome. We're Great. excited. Yeah. We're excited, except for the, the, they, they told us that the comments come back like really fast and furious and we have to turn them right away. Mm. So while we thought we were going to put the rule over and we'd all be able to take that leave we haven't taken for the last two years. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciate your time. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you guys so much. I appreciate your time. Um, yeah. Thanks so much for uh, <laughs> delaying heading back to your meeting <laughs> to talk to me today. And yeah, hopefully we'll talk again soon. Okay. All right. You take care. CyberCast, along with GovCast and HealthCast, is a production of GovCIO Media and Research. For more podcasts and to check out the other shows, head to GovCIOmedia.com. Watch out for new episodes released every Tuesday and Wednesday across our shows. You can follow all of them in your favorite podcast platform. And if you like what you heard, make sure to let us know by leaving a review. And if you have any topics you think we should look into, contact us at newsletter at GCIO.com.